Hi everyone, Liz Klima here, Planetarium Manager at the South Carolina State Museum. Well, you may have heard that on Monday, April 8th, there will be another solar eclipse happening across parts of the U.S. So what does that mean for those of us here in Columbia, South Carolina? Well, for those of us here in Columbia, things won't be quite as dramatic as they were back in 2017. And I will show you why. So in order to see what we saw in 2017, where the moon completely blocked the disk of the sun, you have to be in what's called the path of totality. And that is this dark band stretching across this map of the US here. This is the deepest, darkest part of the moon's shadow. So everyone along this path here that stretches from Texas through parts of Oklahoma and Arkansas and Missouri and on up towards the northeastern part of the continent, all the folks in this path will get to experience what we got to experience, weather permitting, of course, back in 2017. And that's where the moon completely blocks the disk of the sun, um, which allowed us to see the outer solar corona. And we also got to experience at that time some environmental effects, like the temperature dropping a little bit, the sky darkening, animals sometimes acted as they would towards evening twilight. But again, in order to experience all of that, you do have to be along this very narrow path. As you can see from this map, Columbia and actually all of South Carolina is well outside of that path. So what do we get to see? We get to see a partial solar eclipse. That means the moon will cover part of the solar disk, just like you see here in this example. Here in Columbia, the moon will appear to cover about 75% of the sun's disk. And that might sound like a lot, but 75% is not 100%. And for eclipses, that makes a big difference. Enough of the sun's disk is unobscured such that enough light makes it uh, to us to light the day just like any other day. And that means if you didn't know a partial solar eclipse was happening in the afternoon, you probably would have no way of telling. So that begs the question, is a partial solar eclipse worth viewing? Well, that depends. Partial solar eclipses can be really neat to see, especially if you've never seen one before. However, you absolutely positively have to have eclipse glasses when looking at any stage of a partial solar eclipse. Eclipse glasses are specifically designed for safe solar viewing. If you have any leftover from 2017, you will want to carefully inspect those and make absolutely positively sure that they are not damaged in any way. Make sure that they don't have any scratches or holes. If you even suspect that they might be damaged in some way or just don't know, just don't use them. Now, it can be hard to get eclipse glasses this close to an eclipse, but we do still have some at the museum store. But if you don't have any eclipse glasses, don't despair. There's another way you can view the eclipse indirectly through something called pinhole projection. With the pinhole projection method, basically what you do is you stand with your back to the sun and you can either lace your fingers together like this example here in this NASA document or stand with something like a strainer or a colander or even just stand under a tree with a lot of leaves. And again, stand with your back to the sun and look at the ground. It might seem really weird to look at the ground when something really cool is happening in the sky behind you, but what this method does is project an image of what's happening in the sky behind you on the ground. And so what you would see by doing this is you would see the disk of the sun with the moon slowly obscuring more and more of it, kind of taking out more and more of a chunk of the sun. Because you're not looking towards the sun 
at all, you have your back to it, that's what makes this method a guaranteed safe way of viewing the uh, partial solar eclipse. It's indirect, but this is the only guaranteed absolute safe way of doing so. Well, I hope this gives you some useful information and an idea of what to expect on Monday the 8th. I do want to emphasize that the State Museum will not be open that day. We will be closed. But if you're interested in solar viewing, Mel USC's Melton Observatory is planning on having a viewing event that day, weather permitting. So check out Melton Observatory's website if you're interested. But if you would like to learn more about just space in general, um, check out the planetarium and the observatory here at the State Museum. You can head on over to scmuseum.org or follow us on social media to see what we're up to. Please click below to like, subscribe, comment, share. Of course, take care, and I will see you back here next time.